if you look at the statistics, most emergency scenarios are resolved within three days. Some scenarios will go longer, but on average, your emergency will terminate for good or for bad in 72 hours. Recently, Mike Glover challenged me to survive in the Utah high desert with nothing more than what I could stuff into a quart-sized Ziploc bag. Being one of the survival guys here at Fieldcraft Survival, I wasn't going to pass up this opportunity to challenge myself and bring some attention to the realities of bugging out with a minimalist setup that a reasonable person may assemble. Right now, I'm in the high desert of Spanish Fork, Utah. It's early in the morning, a couple minutes before 7 o'clock, and today it's expected to be triple digit weather. If you couldn't tell, this area is really dry. I mean, you just have to look down at your feet and you can see just how dry the land is. It's gonna be a real challenge finding water. It's gonna be a real challenge staying out of the heat. And the only thing I have in my favor is this little 72 hour emergency kit, which was stuffed into a one quart Ziploc bag. I will have a medic with me at all times, just in case, and I will have some emergency gear with me in a backpack, but I'm not allowed to go into that backpack carry anything in the backpack additional to the emergency gear that's in there and it's there just for a safety blanket the only thing i can rely on is this and maybe a little bit of skill and some knowledge along the way this is going to be a challenge and uh <laughs> we'll see how how i fare over the next 72 hours so looks like the clock is about to start right now, here we go. In survival, there's the concept of the rule of threes. On average, a person can live three minutes without air going through their body, three hours without shelter that causes their body to go up or down three degrees, three days without water, or three weeks without food. There's a commonly held belief that survival priorities are fixed in stone. However, there is no such thing as a set order, and they can't be fixed, but flexible instead. If I have a good shelter, my first priority should be water. We need to remember that our survival priorities change based on our condition and our scenario. Coming into this scenario well hydrated, the first thing I needed to look for was shelter. All right, so there's good news and there's bad news. Good news is this is water. And even though it doesn't look that great, it's better than uh, <laughs> being completely bone dry. Bad news is, is that this looks like an old wash. And just based on the debris that's at the base of these trees, I'm assuming that this area could be prone to flash flooding. So even though there's water here, <laughs> and I use the term water very loosely, I don't wanna set up my shelter in this little gully because if there were on the off chance a flash flood, which could happen because of thunderstorms 20 miles away, right? I don't want to make this more of a survival scenario than it has to be. So I'm gonna move on, but I'm gonna keep track of where this is. Looking for a shelter location can be really tricky, but after a half hour, I find a spot that can work. All right, so this doesn't look like the ideal shelter location, but it does have some key attributes that I do like. What I like about this is that this hillside right here is already blocking the sun for the first part of the morning. Now, if I can set up a shade structure, then that'll block the shade for the rest of the afternoon. And I like this area because I can clear out a lot of this uh, rocky area and I've got soft and cool dirt that I'll use to lay on. So now what I'm gonna probably do is just use my emergency blanket, set up a shelter, and then once I establish my shelter, I'm gonna move on to another survival priority. To make shelter, I use my Mylar blanket for my 72 hour bag. I take out my Victorinox Swiss Army knife farmer and with the saw, I move to a nearby bush to harvest sticks that will serve as my shelter frame. Using twine and rocks, I'm able to quickly fashion a rudimentary lean-to shelter for shade from the sun. My next survival priority is water. To survive the next three days, I'll need a place to store my water in order to stay consistently hydrated. In Utah, generally the easiest places to find water is where you can find the highest concentration of green vegetation. Looking for water-loving trees such as willow in your local area is a good indicator of water nearby. Since I know the landscape of this area, 
I head to a nearby creek. There's no shortage of water here, but I've got to get this water back to my camp. This is a Fieldcraft Survival expandable bladder, and I've marked off 24 ounces. I've also put my instructions on here in case I forgot. So one aqua tab for 24 ounces, mix for 10 minutes, and let stand for 30. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out 24 ounces, put it into my Reynolds oven bags, do it again, do it again, do it again, and then put that number of aqua tabs into the oven bags and treat all the water at once. And I'll carry it back using a bag that I'll make out of this shirt. Reynolds oven bags are a quick way to create large mobile water storage in a pinch. Using two bags over each other for security and some duct tape, I use my Fieldcraft water bladder to transfer water from the creek to the oven bags where I can treat all the water at once. I then make a makeshift camelback from the shirt I'm wearing by tying knots to the bottom corners of the shirt and sleeves and securing them with twine. All right, guys, here's the water from the creek. Um, it's been reacting and now I'm just gonna take the first sip of the treated water. Tastes fantastic. Cold, so cold. People forget that one way of cooling yourself down is ingesting cold liquids, right? So I'm gonna make sure that I drink a lot of water this week. I'm gonna take this water bag out of here. This is the one that I collected down at the creek and I've let the water kind of slosh around a little bit. And now I'm gonna transfer this water bag into this depression to kind of support it a little bit better than just on its own. So there's my water bag and something that I brought in my survival kit that will help me get to this because the more I pick up this bag and the more that I kind of tilt it to, to drink from it, the more likely I am to, to damage it. So what I'm gonna do, and people were wondering, you know, why I brought this, I've got this clear vinyl tubing. This clear vinyl tubing is available from hardware stores and I can use it like a straw to keep my bag in place and just drink from it. So it's kind of like a poor man's camel back. Tube goes inside. Mm. That's good water to drink. Now that water is secured, next up for me is improving my shelter. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just getting some of these greens and I'm gonna create a bed that'll probably be in desert conditions about four inches thick. If this were the winter time, you would need 18, 24 inches of greenery to then compress down to be about here. And all I'm trying to do is just insulate a little bit from the ground. Sleep is something that is highly, highly underrated. And my goal is to get good night's sleep every night that I'm out here. One of the easiest ways to cut branches is to hold the knife in reverse grip and to pull it towards you through the material you're cutting. It's never a good idea to cut yourself, and especially not in the field. After acquiring adequate bedding, I call it good. All right, so uh, this is gonna be it for the first night. I've got some green vegetation to keep me up off the ground a little bit. I've got my sun structure providing a little bit of shade, and I might make a pillow using my scarf later on. That paired with my emergency bivy, I should be good to go for the first night. Whenever you make a shelter, it's all about constantly adjusting it, constantly improving upon it. If this holds up tonight, then tomorrow I'll make it stronger and stronger again the next night. So this will be it. Um, it's also gonna be the place where I'm gonna spend most of the hot afternoons just getting away from that. All right, so earlier I was taking a nice little nap during the hottest portion of the day, but as the sun moved across the sky, my nice little sun structure, my little shade, provided less and less shade. Without being able to stay asleep, being restless, I decided I'm gonna make the best use of my time. I decided to make this fish trap. This is a single funnel fish trap. It's not a dual funnel where you have a smaller one inside. This is meant for current. Essentially the fish swims in, 
When the fish gets down to the very bottom, because the current is pushing against it, it can't turn back around. And all you have to do is retrieve the trap and you're good to go. And uh, I'm about two hours into this process right now. Passive activities like making a fish trap are a way to be productive without expending excessive energy. Using branches from a nearby narrow leaf willow, I form the frame of my fish trap. By tying off one end with cordage and forming a hoop from branches on the other, I'm able to form the cone shape for my trap. I'm then able to use my knife to create a cut on the willow branch to peel off the bark in a single strip. Then I weave it into the frame to finish off the trap. After setting the trap, I retreat back to my shelter and call it a day. Something that I did pack in my emergency kit are these noon hydration tablets. When you mix them with the water, it's essentially like Gatorade, just without the calories. I'm gonna make it a point as part of my routine to do one electrolyte tablet towards the end of the day. Maybe tomorrow I'll do mid-afternoon, but I'm gonna make sure that I monitor my water intake, that I'm gonna drink at least two or three waters for every one of these. The next morning I start bright and early while the temperature is still cool and I begin fishing since it's an excellent way to put food in my belly. Last night uh, I decided to do a little fishing because I was bored out of my mind and I came down here to the creek. I tried all the different flies that I brought with me, some large ones, but I found that the small ones, something like this, is what uh, helped me bring in a small brook trout. And what I'm noticing now with these flies is that this one is barbless. So if this were a real survival scenario and not just a practical exercise, I would actually make sure that all my flies have barbs because I don't want to take any chances and risk losing a fish that could mean calories in my belly. My fishing rod is pretty simple. All it consists of is a branch, the line from my kit, snare wire to serve as guides, and my Fresnel lens that acts as the fishing reel holding the surplus of line. After soaking overnight, it's time to check out my fish trap. Sadly, nothing. Well, time to reset it and keep going about it. Damn, empty. It's really easy to let something like this get you down and let it destroy your morale. But it's fishing after all. You're not guaranteed anything. The rest of my day consists of me trying to find food, fishing, but with no luck. But after a few hours of casting, I finally catch something. I'll take it. I'll take it all day. Now, I'm roughly 25 hours into this challenge and I've gone a lot longer without food. So I'm gonna consider this fish emergency food and I've got them on a stringer. I'm gonna keep fishing because I could probably catch more. And between this one and the one I caught last night, along with wild edibles, I could get a good solid meal, a whole rush of calories into my system all at once to help me keep going for the long haul. The best way to keep meat fresh is to keep it alive. And as long as the fish have water running over their gills, they'll stay alive until you're ready to cook them. Well, last night was pretty uneventful. Uh, shelter held up nicely. There was almost no wind. I did, at about 1 o'clock in the morning, jump into this emergency bivy sack. And this just helped block the wind a little bit. I didn't really provide a lot of insulation, although it did, it did reflect my body heat back into me. And I did wake up. Uh, with plenty of condensation on the inside of this bag. What I'm gonna do today, if you can see, the bedding, every night that you sleep on it, it kinda gets matted down. So I'm gonna add more bedding to this so I'm not sleeping essentially like right on the ground. In this downtime that I have, I'm going to stay hydrated. I'm gonna keep improving upon my shelter uh, and I should be able to sleep easily through the night again tonight. As the day draws on and my hunger grows, I need to find a way to start a fire to cook. To make this fire, I don't screw around. I use a mini Bic and fire plugs from Pro Camp Tech to get a fire going as quickly as possible. Using very fine twigs and then larger fuel, I build a small fire just big enough to cook the fish that I need to eat for lunch on a hot rock. 
with fire restrictions in place. The only fire I had over 72 hours was this single fire meant for cooking. I had fire officials on hand just in case it got out of control. This right here is a quick meal from the woods. I've got a mullen stalk. The last foot of the mullen, the flexible portion, you essentially remove all of these flowers and these leaves. And in the inside is gonna be a very soft pith that you can eat. It's kind of like asparagus. This is broadleaf plantain. This is found in almost everyone's front yard. When it's, it gets old, it does get these stringy bits to it, but it is edible. It kind of reminds me of lettuce. Dandelion is a great edible. Dandelions are found everywhere. They're considered weeds, but they are great uh, bitters to put in your salads. This right here is white clover. The whole plant is edible. So I've got some of the flowers. I've got some of the leaves. I've got a couple small trout here. Okay, the whole fish is edible. I'm going to eat everything, including the bones. And you cannot have all this without good old Cholula. Cholula is something that I brought in my, my bag. Um, a little bit goes a long way. And even if I don't like the bitter flavor of certain foods, that Cholula is going to make it all right. Let's do this. Hmm. It's so good. Uh, Cholula really makes us go a long way. Uh, I'm a big fisherman. And I often, you know, throw back little fish. But in a circumstance like this, everything, everything is considered food, right? Um, usually little fish like four inches and under, you can eat the whole thing. Uh, I'm gonna try with this guy. Bones might be a little hard, but we'll see what happens. Cholula. Mm. After 30 hours, a meal like this will give me the nutrients I need to get me to the final push on the last day. Hey guys, Kevin here. Uh, it was a really, really hot ass day, but we made it through. Gonna be just as warm tomorrow. Probably gonna end up jumping in that creek. Made all sorts of random projects today. You'll see them the first thing in the morning. For now, sign and off. All right. That sunrise right there indicates that we're on day three. I got 24 hours left in this survival challenge. Feeling really, really good. Um, I've accomplished a lot so far and I'm riding on high knowing that yesterday I had fish, um, I slept well, but I can't let that put me into a false sense of security. Today is a day where I have to get lots and lots of H2O. I'm trying to transition back into getting out of the woods and getting back into my normal life, but I can already feel the effect of it. Like I didn't sleep super, super hot. I got great sleep, but not comfortable sleep. Um, waking up on rocks and you know my bedding was all matted down so uh, I'm just gonna try to get through the day today beat the heat stay cool and uh, and finish with strength and finish with honor on this last day I keep the schedule most of the same I'm looking for food and most importantly staying hydrated I'm spending my day looking for edible plants such as mullen roseberries and golden currants as they will do some to keep me satiated however I do have one more trick in my 72 hour Ziploc. One of the items that I packed in my 72 hour kit are these little butter packets. This is ghee, it's clarified butter, and it's mixed with coconut oil, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of stevia, right? A natural sweetener. This doesn't have all the calories I need for today, but it's enough to keep me going. Yesterday, I definitely felt an energy lag. Even walking around, I felt like I was moving in slow motion. I knew that this was only going to be 72 hours and I knew that my body would be burning off the calories that were like residual in my stomach, but I knew on that final day today, I would need a little extra boost. So this is my secret weapon. I'm planning to do one of these every five hours today, just to give me a little bit of caloric intake throughout the day, in addition to what I can, I can find off the land. And I'm going to enjoy every minute of this fatty, buttery goodness. So here we go. Mm. Oh my God, I might need some privacy here. Hold on. Mm. Mm. Oh my God, I can't even tell you what that tastes like right now. Next one in five hours, and five hours from there. 
you know what's interesting is like you just like I don't know if it was a good idea or a bad idea for me to wear a watch because when I have the watch on it makes me constantly look at it and all I'm doing is counting down the hours right especially during the boring parts of the day where I'm like man I'm going to sleep in seven hours I'm like what am I gonna do for seven hours <laughs> you know fish with okay returns I'm not the greatest build more things I don't know <laughs> maybe next time I won't bring a watch This trap is a cage style trap that is very easy to construct. I've square lashed the bottom four corners and I've taken a length of 550 paracord and I've run it from each diagonal. From there, I worked in my log cabin construction to a point where the paracord is actually now under tension. And from there, I took the innards of the 550 paracord and I secured the lashings this way or the corners this way right the, the figure four trap trigger uh was made out of willow and it's very very sensitive the only thing holding it on is this contact right here with the slightest bit of down pressure up pressure any direction will trigger this trap with each day that passes the temperature continues to climb with temps expected to reach 104 degrees heat exhaustion can impact one's chances for survival in a scenario like this. I must find ways to keep cool for this final stretch. This heat is not something I like being in. I know I can get by. Um, and the funny thing is, I know that the heat is doing stuff to me and I can kind of identify that and recognize it. And it still sucks. Um, even though I just tell myself like, hey, it's just the heat, it's just the heat. Man. I think between the heat and not eating, it's, it's, it's taking a toll. Um, I mean, earlier today, I, uh, I was down here and I'm going through all my stuff and I'm like, man, even my pants feel looser in like three days. I definitely have been getting all the water I can drink. I've been hydrating like crazy. So I'm more hydrated than I was when I woke up this morning. But this pool over here looks deep enough where I'm going in, and I probably will stay in for a bit. Oh. I might just stay here for a while. The initial cold kind of takes it out of your out of your lungs, but once you get used to it, oh. Jumping into this creek is an exciting break from the routine I've settled into here. But even after jumping in, with all my clothes on, my clothes will be dry in less than an hour. I can't let this moment of fun overshadow the very real threat of high heat found in these high mountains. I didn't sleep well that final night. Something about the anticipation of being done at 7 a.m. When I did wake at 4.30, I policed up my camp. I made sure everything was packed up. I made a celebratory cup of Black Rifle coffee I knew that this ordeal would be over soon, and I was ready to go home. Well, that concludes the 72 hour Ziploc bag challenge. It's seven o'clock. If you guys are interested in testing yourself in a similar way to the way that I just did here, please go to fieldcraftsurvival.com and sign up for the 48 hour Ziploc bag challenge, which is coming this October, as well as future dates. If you guys enjoyed what you just saw, please click the subscribe button down below and follow us on our social media accounts. It's been a fun time, but I think I'm ready for a shower and a good meal. Guys, for Fieldcraft Survival, I'm Kevin Estella. Thanks for watching. You wanna hear your next challenge? I literally just made it up while I was sitting here and I was hearing you talk. You, Ricky, one bag, 72 hours. Okay. That's it. And it's going to happen in the next 30 days. <laughs> <laughs>